pretty much any machine that's too old to be reused. Right. So uh, second or maybe third gen i5 and below. You just uh, hurt a lot of people's feelings. I know, I know, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I know. I legitimately completely forgot, but I did write a check. Wow, thank you, you so are. much. No, no problem at all, thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's a you. huge, that's a big deal. <laughs> Time to take out the trash. So, uh, a lot of you ask us what we do with all the hardware that we review, and we wanted to show you what we can do with it. Jay recently had a video where he talked about PC heaven, and he went somewhere else to get to it. I would like to show you what actual PC heaven looks like. Uh, it's here in our office. So we have a lot of cases, we have a lot of other products. Uh, we have i7 earbuds we're going to be getting rid of, and the plan is to take a lot of this stuff over to the Cramden Institute, which does e-waste recycling and awesome stuff where they repurpose, rebuild machines so that they can donate them to people who can't afford them otherwise or sell them for very cheap to make it accessible. Before that, this video is brought to you by Asus and the ROG Crosshair 8 series of X570 motherboards for AMD. Asus has both the Crosshair 8 Hero Dark and the Crosshair 8 Extreme available offering high-end motherboards for high core count AMD systems. We've used the Crosshair series for years for everything from basic overclocking up to liquid nitrogen overclocking, and we found them easy to work with, particularly for their extremely well-organized BIOS menus. Learn more at the link in the description below. So we have to do this a couple times a year because we accumulate a lot of stuff to review. We buy a lot of it, like all the pre-builds we've been buying, that's certainly starting to take up a lot of space. And I wouldn't really want to just sell that to someone, a lot of them, because they're horrible and I wouldn't wish that on anybody. So we're gonna have to figure out what to do with those. They might end up in one of these piles. But a lot of other stuff we get sent for review, we accumulate for review, whatever. And cases are huge, we can't keep them forever, but what we like to do is a few simple things. One of them is we like to keep key products of any category for future regression testing. So uh, if there's a case that we actually like, there you go, TD500, then I'm glad I, I was worried I'd have to look for a really long time to find an example. But if there's a case we actually like, like the TD500, we'll hang on to it for future regression testing if we need to either maybe recalibrate our testing process or if we do some one-off special test where we need a good one, we need a bad one. So on that same note, we hang on to cases that we think are horrible because we'll probably want something terrible to use again in the future. The MSI Secura 500X is an, a fantastic example because we recently used it for that giant 500 millimeter Corsair fan testing where we needed a case that was so suffocated for air that putting a 500 millimeter fan up against it would make a staggering difference. So there are reasons to keep both extremely good and extremely bad cases and a couple in between, but we don't need that many in between. And we certainly don't need every bad case if it's never gonna come up again. So if it's not enough of a laughing stock or horrible enough, or if it's not just that impressive. And what we end up doing is we go through them, Patrick and I will mark all these today for keep or not keep and not keep, we don't just throw them away and we don't sell them, we don't give them away for a lot of reasons. One of them is that we don't keep any of the packaging material for the most part for these. Uh, and so what we do instead is we donate stuff to the Cramden Institute, which we're gonna link them below. They are awesome, they do really good work where they process e-waste, they process completely functional components like this. So we do have a lot of e-waste we can bring over to them. I think Patrick has found some. Patrick, what did you find? Nothing. Oh, there's more. There's always, there's actually a lot more. Let's, I think we're missing a stack. Let's go get the other stack. We're actually partnering with the Cramden Institute to do a charity auction of one of our exploded gigabyte power supplies in order to fund its educational programs, digital literacy, technology classrooms, and its e-waste and refurbishing programs. Cramden is auctioning an autographed exploded gigabyte power supply on its eBay page. The power supply is non-functional and will not work but it probably wouldn't really work before it exploded anyway. Both Patrick Stone and I signed it at Cramden Institute to commemorate a milestone accomplishment for our early power supply testing efforts and to help them raise funds for what they do. If you want a highly rare and signed piece of our hardware history and you want to support Cramden Institute while you're at it, you can buy the power supply at the link in the description below to make a donation that goes 100% to Cramden Institute's technology education programs. Trash pickup has arrived. So I believe we can, we have some other stuff here. Uh, we have a lot of motherboards. Actually, we're gonna go through some of this today. So we try to keep about one to two motherboards of each generation. Video cards we'll be handing on to, at least uh, for now. 
There's a lot of coolers, a lot of duplicates of coolers that we really don't need. Um, ID Cooling has sent us a lot of these. I have actually used one in a build recently and I was happy with it, but I don't need five more of them. So we're gonna go through some of those today as well. But uh, we did come in here for a trash pickup. So let's pick up the trash first and we'll go deal with the cases. Sorry. Oh, cool. That's the. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some of our viewers uh, left us surprises. Yes. Uh, that viewer messaged me not too long ago. He will be happy to see that the power supply is going to where all of the copper can be harvested from it so it can actually do something useful. <laughs> you mean Hardware Heaven? Yes, Hardware Heaven. Because we're sending all the stuff there to be killed. So we have some cases like this one that came in for review, re requested or not, that we didn't get to, um, or that weren't interesting, or that multiple were sent and we didn't need multiple, but they always like send this. multiple. Yeah. <laughs> um, so those can go. Okay, so we're gonna go through the cases a little more off camera. You get the idea. I think that's it, sir. In the video. Okay, we're at Crampton Institute now. So we have a truckload of stuff. I have brought it to Tom to deal with. Yes. Thank you for dealing with our e-waste. Yeah, no problem. Some of it's usable, but do you want to go through some of the stuff that Cramden does? Yeah, sure. So Cramden Institute is a nonprofit located here in Durham, North Carolina. Um, our mission is to provide technology tools and training to bridge the digital divide. So that includes things like um, education. We, we provide things. Uh, I saw classrooms, right? You got two yes, classrooms. We, we, we do have two classrooms. With, uh, we, we like to do things like uh, PC build camps, like in the right. summertime for middle school and high school kids. We also provide digital literacy training for adults. Um, so that's like teaching people how to do things like uh, Microsoft Word, Word right. processing, how to use a computer, things so like that. Do you think they would have use for a motherboard that caught on fire? Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, they would not. But one of okay. the great things we can do with that <laughs> is uh, the other side of our, pr our process, which is um, our recycling and refurbishing uh, okay. yeah. side. So we do have a warehouse in the back. We'll take you guys back there and show you that around, but that's where we would be either recycling or refurbishing right. any sort of uh, donated equipment. So for the PC building camps, is it basically a start to finish, learn how to build a computer? Yeah, so basically it's teaching people uh, what the different components are, how they fit together, how, um, how to build a computer. So right. by the end of it, they have a machine that they can benchmark, they can try out games with it. Um, we are, at, at the moment, we're looking for newer uh, components. We're working about nine years old at this point. Okay, yeah. So we've got a lot of like, you know, first, second, maybe even third gen i5s and i7s okay, that we're putting yeah. in the machines. Yeah. Um, same with the graphics cards. I think we're at like 600 series GTXs. Yeah, for the PC build I mean, camp. right now. Like, yeah, the, the right now those are pretty valuable. They, yeah, they, uh, I guess let's look at some of the stuff while he brings in more. Yeah, sure. Let's take a look at some of the stuff he's already brought in. So this is some actually, this is fun. Uh, this is a radiator. <laughs> oh my God. It's very heavy, it's yes. sharp. So be yeah, with it. yeah, we'll be careful with that. Um, so let's set this up here, Andrew. So that is called a water cool Mora. I, I packed it with dry ice mm -hmm. uh, and it exploded. Oh, wow. I think it's entirely copper. There might be some steel around mm -hmm. here. So there's, you know, this may be, Maybe a couple dollars value in yes. copper. Yeah, uh, we, we love copper and aluminum around here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so in anything that's a scrap machine, um, you know, whether it's a 20 year old, you know, like 
XP machine right. or it's a component like this. Um, we partner with an e-waste recycler in Statesville, North Carolina, that will basically, um, they take about 20 to 24 pallets of equipment from us at a time. Uh -huh. um, and, and literally that could be a big box of stuff like this. Right. It could be pallets of stacked, ready to go, you know, older machines. And basically what they do is um, they break them down for uh, metal recycling. Okay. And we end up getting a payment back from them uh, for- To help fund the operation. Yeah, to help fund right. the operation. It keeps the lights on, things yeah. like that. Yeah, because this, I, I mean, it's, so it's mostly copper and the others are mostly aluminum. Mm -hmm. It should be pretty much you melted down and it's yes. you know, reusable. Yeah, yeah they, they will definitely recover that stuff for us. And then uh, as for cases, You guys donated some cases to us about a year ago, yeah. right? Yeah, so we, we ended up using a good number of those in our PC build camp. We we also did uh, have a few for our surplus sale. We do offer a surplus sale of any sort of functioning, you know, nicer, newer machines. Right. That's every third Thursday okay. of the month. Um, so you do that on site? We do that here. Okay. In fact, later I can show you some of the stuff we still have from our last one. Yeah. Um, basically, if you're interested in that and you're local to the area, you can sign up on our website, cramden.org, for our mailing uh, letter, and we'll let you know, you know, when the next sale is, kind of what's in it, maybe, right. and stuff like that. Nice. So. Yeah. So is that normally components or like it's a uh, function fully functioning machines, mostly okay. laptops. Um, we do get a lot of like tablets, like older tablets, like fourth gen iPads, right. stuff like that. Um, if any of that's working, um, we will sell that, and uh, it, it is another way for us to help pay for you know our programs and everything else. Right. Before the the whole pandemic and everything, uh, we did a lot of Saturday work events. Uh -huh. So uh, we would have like you know thirty slots or so, and we'd have a lot of teenagers, you know, people coming in on the weekends, and we would split everybody up. So we would have you know half the people uh, working on computers, and right. the other half would be awarding computers to students in the area. Oh, cool! So okay. we would actually have the students with their families come in, right. sit down, learn how to plug their computer up. We would show them how to work it because uh, most of our machines that go out do not have windows on them. Um, we actually uh, load them with a Linux distribution called Endless OS. Okay. Um, it's a great pro product for the people that we're helping. And you know, we, we, do, we give out Windows machines mostly to college aged and above uh -huh. uh, recipients. But if you're you know, a, a sixth grader, or, you know, a fourth grader, we usually give them a Linux machine. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'll have to check it. What was the distro called? It's called Endless OS. Why, uh, why that one? So uh, we found that it's fairly stable for what we need. It's got a lot of built-in programs. Uh -huh. um, so it's got like an encyclopedia because a lot of our recipients don't have regular access to the internet. Um, there's a lot of like, you know, oh, rural, rural students like farther out of the cities that have either spotty internet or no internet at all. Right. Um, those, those machines with the Linux distribution we use has pretty much everything you need. You can do you know, book reports, like, you know, low level elementary right. school level, like pro projects, you can do all of that using that OS and it's all built in, which okay, we really cool. like. Do you want to do a walkthrough of the, uh, the warehouse area? Yeah, sure. We can do a walkthrough. Let's check it out. If you remember our last uh, building, um, this one's quite a lot bigger. Uh, we all, it's also a lot taller. It's a lot uh. more, you know, space. Um, we're hoping in the future to actually uh, stack pallets vertically so that we can utilize the space a little yeah, bit better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is our warehouse. Um, we currently have some volunteers working on uh, computers today. Um, they're actually loading the endless operating system, so you can take a look cool. at that later if you'd like. Um, but yeah, so we have a table here. This is kind of where we do our, we, where we clean. So we like to make sure, even though the students are getting computers mostly for free, um, we try to make them look as new as possible. That's awesome. So that yeah. includes, you know, taking, opening them, blowing out the dust, making sure everything's nice and clean inside, cleaning the outside, removing stickers, asset tags, anything that's yeah. identifiable to the company that donated to us. Um, we also uh, clean our keyboards and our mice. We reuse a lot of keyboards and mice. Um, for some reason, uh, mice are harder to come by than keyboards. <clears throat> it, you know, interestingly enough. Um, so uh, I think that it probably says something about the quality of the mice shipping out with yes. OEM and pre-built systems. Yeah, more than yeah, anything. yeah. Um, so if if there's anybody local to our area, again, if you work at any of the companies around here, we are happy to take any sort of keyboards, mice, new or used, 
um, we'll either clean it and reuse it or we'll recycle it depending right. on the condition. Um, so these are our uh, these are our, our workbenches. Yeah, um, I like these a lot because this is basically like a test bench style setup. Yeah, yeah. So we 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 uh, learned about this setup from a uh, talk at an electronics reuse conference. Okay. A couple years ago, uh, it's a great setup because it's fairly cheap to put together. Um, and very sturdy. It looks it's like. very sturdy, and it pretty much does all the work we need. So we've got our monitors, we've got switches, we can do Windows deployment through our server as well as, you know, uh, uh, Linux key loading. So um, this is kind of uh, how our machines arrive to us. This is a good example right here. So uh, some of the larger donors we have, um, we'll go and pick up from them. We offer free pickup for uh, anybody tw about 20 minutes or 20 miles in this area from right. our location. Um, we require 20 devices or more, so 20 desktops, 20 laptops. Um, our bigger donors will say, will call me up and say, hey, we've got 500, 500 desktops. Right. And it's like, okay, we'll, we'll come get it. We have a box truck, we can, we can do it. Um, sometimes we palletize it for them, sometimes they have it ready for us. Um, but this is kind of how the majority of our machines arrive to us. And it, from there, we take them off and each one of our volunteers boots them up and you know, tests it out. That We have a uh, hard drive and uh, memory tests that we run. And if right. everything's clear, we move it on to- Yeah, you have the- you said the cage, right? Yeah, for, yeah, we can go back there yeah, and show so, you that. So is that, that's hard drive data destruction? Yeah, so we, we do now have a, uh, a cage. It just provides another level of security. Right. Um, we're actually getting ready to put in a uh, electronic uh, mag lock system right, yeah. that'll keep this all closed up. We did just move into this building a couple of months ago. We're still putting everything together. Yeah, we were moving at the same time. Yeah, yeah, so we were talking a little bit about that. So um, this is our cage. Um, basically, uh, any device that has uh, data on it um, we'll come in here first where it will get either uh, wiped, like software wiped, uh -huh. secure erased, or you know whatever is applicable to the device. Um, if it's something that the donor has told us they want destroyed physically, we will destroy it physically for them. We have uh, basically uh, large trash bins that are locked. We slide them right into the, the hole and then those go to our recycler oh, okay. um, who will then shred them. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. We offer uh, you know certificates of destruction. We do charge if we're gonna serialize the hard drives, but if you just need a certificate of destruction, we can provide that for I you. I feel like certificate of destruction is an awesome e-waste themed band name. <laughs> like, it's like a metal band name. Any scrap machines that we have come in, they're either gonna be too old or there's something like seriously wrong with them. We don't really spend the time doing motherboard swaps or anything like that, uh, just cause you know, it doesn't make much sense for us. I'm, so. Well, yeah, I mean, at some point, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Lewis Rossman. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So he has, in one of his videos, he talks about how he has to set a hard limit for time commitment. Cause when you're troubleshooting, right? Yeah. You're always, you're, you're always like, right, you're like, I know I'm about to figure out the problem. Pretty much any machine that's too old to be reused, right. so uh, second or maybe third gen i5 and below. You just uh, hurt a lot of people's feelings. I know, I know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I know. <laughs> Especially second gen. Yeah. We're sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> But we, we, do, um, we do recycle those. Uh, any machines that are really old um, may have a resale value on the collector market. Um, we've done like uh, eBay sales for like Commodore 64 oh, yeah, monitors. There's some like Apple stuff. That's, yeah, Apple yeah. stuff. Um, we actually had somebody who was a, an Apple engineer like in the 80s uh, donate an original uh, all-in-one oh, with cool. the carrying handle. Cool. And, and even a note about everything that he did on it and what and how important it was for him back in the day. And we ended up uh, selling that to, to a collector who, oh, cool. who really yeah. loved it. it. Like it went to somebody who was actually gonna use it, like code right. on it just as a hobby, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, a lot of the stuff just gets palletized, wrapped up and it goes to our recycler right. and gets shredded. This is where our, um, our techs work. So we, we do have, um, uh, people on staff who work on machines. Um, basically, uh, we'll get an order from a nonprofit that needs 20 laptops for their staff, or uh, you know, maybe they need 20 desktops right. for a computer lab they're setting up. This is where our staff members will work on on individual pro okay. projects. Um, do you have like? Uh, oh, I see. Do you, I see some memory here. Yeah, so. yeah. So we we do hold on to memory because we never know. Um, sometimes memory gets pulled before it's donated to us because the, the donor knows they're going to need to reuse it. Right, that makes um, sense. So we like to hold on to stuff and we like to keep it organized because if we need it, we know exactly where it's at. Right. Um, 
But yeah, and you can see uh, our our finished tested monitors the way the way that we <laughs> these ones yes okay the, so um, the way that we test our monitors is basically we look for bruising, scratches, any sort of cosmetic defects. Uh -huh. If everything gets cleared, it gets cleaned, and then they get wrapped face to face. Okay. Um, most of our most of our recipients are picking up one machine or possibly two if there's two children. Um, and so when they're face to face, they survive much, right. much better than they would if they were in any other. Are way. these were these delivered or these were determined? Those are not, delivered. Not usable. That's how okay. they. That's how they arrived. That's a so, shame because some of them look like yeah. they were maybe not bad. Yeah, but, but um, you know we you know beggars can't be choosers. Right. We're happy to get what we get, and I guarantee you, at least a few of the ones in that box will be fine. That looks like uh, maybe an. Is that Asus? No. Uh, the white one. Yeah. It's a Fujitsu. Wow. Yeah. All right. So you've been, you've seen a lot of monitors. Yeah. Yeah. I've okay. seen a lot of monitors. <laughs> You're just like, oh yeah, no, Fujitsu. Yeah. We, we do a lot of uh, laptop shipments out to people who are on the other side of the state uh -huh. or in other states entirely. Um, so we do have a shipping area. It's a little messy because there's a lot of work that gets done here. Yeah. We have yeah. probably 30 or 40 laptops go out every day. Um, I like the, um, yes. I like yeah, the yeah, reuse yeah. of the EVGA sticker yeah yeah we tried to make it look you know this the scale was kind of boring so we wanted to make it cooler oh it's so. it's extreme now yeah enthusiast yeah. bill i'll get you some kingpin stickers too he's their overclocker oh that'd be awesome somewhere out there our, our rep uh, jacob from evga is watching this and he is very excited about this so. <laughs> we do have an ebay page um we do get a lot of machines in that have cosmetic defects that the machine's perfectly fine right. but it's missing the q key or the a key right right or you know it's very shiny and you can't really fix that um, we do resell machines on our eBay store. Um, so we have, we sell CPUs, graphics cards, uh, laptops, all sorts of stuff. Cool. Um, anything that doesn't fit what would be our one of our programs, right. we'll either go out to eBay or our surplus sale. What's the uh, eBay seller name, the account? Uh, Cramden Institute. Cramden Institute. Yeah, so you should be able to find us. And um, we'll link that below in case anyone wants to check it out. Yeah, we have, if you just, uh, you, you never know what's gonna show up. We sell all sorts of stuff, IP phones, right. enterprise networking gear, all sorts of I've got stuff. some motherboards I need to bring in from my car before we leave that uh, they might be useful for you to, either locally or to sell on the eBay okay. store. Yeah, yeah. There's some Z490, Z370, there's a couple X470, X570 boards. So they're fairly recent. Cool, uh, cool. Perfectly usable, most of them. Um, just, uh, you know, we end up with duplicates or yeah, yeah. What, we just don't have space. So. Yep, and of course, you know, we, we'll, we'll test them before we, you know, put yeah, them up, but yeah. you know. That, that would definitely it, be Generally cool from us, if it doesn't have a piece of blue tape that has fire written in all caps, <laughs> it's probably fine. <laughs> yeah, 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 that makes sense. If it sense. says fire, then get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no telling what the cause of the fire was. Yeah, this is awesome. No, this is a, a big upgrade from, uh, even before it was impressive. But... Yeah, we went from uh, an operation in the mid 2000s being operated out of our founder's basement with his son to a kind of a semi-large space, and then we doubled that space, and now we have this space. So if you want to learn more about Cramden Institute, we'll have a lot of links in the description below. Uh, we're gonna work something out where we'll have at least something on eBay that'll be mentioned earlier in the video, but check that out, link to the description below. And uh, you know, if you're local, come drop some stuff off. Yeah. Do they need to schedule for that or they just come No, by so if, if, you're, if you're bringing equipment by, we're open Monday through Friday, nine to five. Um, you can uh, basically show up, ring the doorbell, we'll open it up, we'll bring out carts. You probably saw the carts from earlier. Uh, we'll load it up. We also provide uh, donation receipts for tax deductible donations. Um, we take equipment, we take uh, you know funding, so right. you know, monetary donations. And um, yeah, uh, oh, give I'm, us a call if you have any questions. I'm if glad you're not you sure. mentioned that actually. I, I legitimately completely forgot, but I did write a check. Oh wow! Uh, thank before you so much. Leaving here, so two grand. Wow! Thank you, you so much. Out. No, no problem at all. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's a you've, huge. That's a big deal. <laughs> well, he just cleared a lot of the uh, the space in my office, so that's yeah. a big deal to me also. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net if you want to help us out, or we'd prefer if you just go to Cramden's site, which we'll link below. And we'll see you all next time.